I'm going to show you how you can integrate Grafana Cloud with a Zabbix. And to do that, what I have here today is a free tier of Grafana Cloud without any additions, without any customizations. I've signed up to it only a couple of minutes ago. And I also have a Zabbix server installed uh, on my virtual machine that is deployed in the digital ocean, installed from the packages. The version is 6.4.10. But again, if you're watching this video later, even after a year, the same guide will most likely work work on the Zabbix 7.0, 7.2, 4, and so on. So as I said, like there's nothing configured. The first thing that we need to do to make this integration possible, we need to go to the plugins and data here and click on a plugin. As you can see, there's already a wide list of the plugins that you can use. But the thing is that if you will type in Zabbix, you'll find nothing. And you'll find nothing just because by default, there is a filtering on the state that are installed and a Zabbix integration is not installed by default. So only thing that you have to do is click on all, then you will see this good old uh, Zabbix integration plugin by Alexander. So click on it and you can see what kind of dashboards you can have in the end. You can also see some sort of the features that are available with this integration installation of how you can configure this plugin if your Grafana is installed locally, not in the cloud. And by the way, I have also the video about how you can do that in case if your Grafana is local, I will link it above the video or, or somewhere else. And uh, you can also go through the documentation or uh, find a community resources, feedback and support. But to continue the installation process, the only thing that we need to click is this blue button, which will install via grafana.com and uh, I will just reload my cache because I previously already was clicking around so you can see the green button install the plugin again you can read the same documentation you can manually download the zip files but this will not work if you're installing on the cloud for the cloud just one click install the plugin when you've clicked it, again, uh, you can see that now, of course, you have an option to remove the plugin. We don't need that. And we also don't need to manage the instance. Like there's nothing for us to do for the sake of this integration. So we are absolutely free to just close this page and go back to our Grafana cloud, where we can again go back to the plugins and uh, probably better to reload the page. And now after a couple of seconds or right away, right away, we will see the Zabbix plugin, which is already installed, we can click on it and make sure that the plugin is enabled. As you can see, it is in my case, um, better double check if it is disabled, then enable it. So now when we have a plugin automatically installed in our Grafana cloud, it's a matter of configuring the data source where to do that and how to do that pretty simple. Again, we don't need to move anywhere else. Uh, still in, in the cloud UI, uh, the only place where we go is connections and data sources, where again, you can find well, not too many, but still some data source connections that are already configured. And those will not be Zabbix. So we need to configure Zabbix separately. What we do is click add a new data data source. And then we can filter by the name Zabbix, which is a plugin that we just installed. What kind of parameters we see here is a name and uh, a name is just the name of the data source in the Grafana cloud, it doesn't influence any com connection or communication to, with a Zabbix. Uh, basically, it's just really used for the naming. So for the sake of this video, I will use a Zabbix dash data source URL that's uh, a mandatory thing that you need to use like you need to point your Grafana plugin this data source to the URL of your Zabbix frontend and API underscore JSON RPC dot PHP file, which actually is the endpoint for the API on the Zabbix frontend side. And you don't have to worry like how to configure this or how to install or, or what to do on the Zabbix. If you have Zabbix up and running, and you can connect to the frontend, then it's already there, you don't need to worry about anything. The only thing that you need to do is copy paste your URL to the actual pad of the Zabbix frontend. And in my case, it is IP address slash Zabbix. And then just add uh, API underscore JSON RPC dot PHP. 
we're good. Then authentication, either no or O out or basic authentication. I will go with a basic. And again, I have my Zabbix installed um, from the packages without any additional configuration. It's basically clean installation with just one Zabbix server host being monitored. And a default login for the Zabbix frontend is admin with a capital A and password is Zabbix everything lowercase. If you have a TLS, I don't. But if you do, then you fill in these parameters as per your needs. If you want to play around with HTTP headers, you can do it here. Then we need to configure the Zabbix connection. And there are two options how we can do that. The most common and simplest way is just by using the user and a password. We will do it also. Or another way is API token. So you can generate in the Zabbix API token um, for the connection. Uh, you can use a session ID of your user. So just use uh, API method user login on the Zabbix side using the same credentials, you will get the session ID and you can use it as a token. We will avoid these extra steps and just use the user and password. So username will capital admin and a password is lowercase Zabbix. Additional settings if you want to play around with uh, cookies or you want to play around with a cache or a timeout, that's up to you. Trends, I definitely recommend to have them. Uh, and you can even change a little bit uh, parameters like when to actually include the trends in, in the queries uh, in, in more favor of the performance. All of this is like when we talk about a Zabbix, there are two ways how you can visualize the historical data that you have. Um, default, most common one is a history data and a history data is just raw data that you're collecting with your Zabbix server. And the more friendly for performance are the trends. Like during one hour, you can have thousands of history records or just one trend entry. And trend is calculation of one hour of the history that includes the minimal value, maximal and average value. So basically you are saving a lot of the network resources for transferring the data. You are saving a lot of performance on a Zabbix site to gather all of that data from the database. And you are still getting a full insight about what happened during that time period. Direct database connection, that's also possible if you don't want to use API, you can connect to the Zabbix database directly using just the credentials. But I would probably not recommend to do that just because API is more performance optimized unless you have some uh, replicated node of the Zabbix database that is used only for the Grafana visualization options or maybe some, some other visualization tools, then it's fine. If not, if you are connecting directly to your, let's say production Zabbix installation, then it's much better to use API. And private data source connect, that's exactly about a case if you are worried, but how am I going to connect the publicly available Grafana cloud with a Zabbix monitoring tool that is located in my network? Because I want to make sure that the connection is secure. I don't want to lose any passwords or sensitive data that I might be passing between these two softwares. So PDC, uh, you can find it here. You will have to do your own like bigger Googling and, and uh, finding the explanation how this actually works but PDC is the thing that will ensure that connection between the Grafana cloud and the monitored system, Zabbix in this case, will be safe, no matter the fact that the connection will go through the internet, not the local local network. And as you can see, the Zabbix is also one of the open source uh, plugins and data sources that is supported by PDC. So we are safe. But for the sake of this video, I will not configure the PDC. If you want to see how to do that, just ask me in the comments and I will make sure to make another video about it. Basically, we're done. So after configuring all of that, we can click save and test. And we can see that the Zabbix API version is 6.4.10. And we can see that Zabbix frontend version is 6.4.10. So we connected to the correct Zabbix frontend. Um, after that, we can build our first dashboard with a Zabbix. And uh, to do that, you can of course do it from the scratch. You can create the dashboards for your host, host groups, um, all sort of the stuff that you have inside your Zabbix. But again, for the sake of demonstration, we will import already community made dashboard to visualize the health of your Zabbix server and a Linux server that is hosting your Zabbix server. Do that, click on the import dashboard and uh, 
Where can we find all the community-made dashboards? Here, in the grafana.com slash dashboards. So move here, then just search for the Zabbix. You'll find many of them, but the thing is that many of them are outdated and like made for the Zabbix version 4.4 as example, which most likely will not work with a Zabbix 6.4 or even older Zabbix server 3.2. So what I will do, I will sort by uh, last updated and what I've tested previously is this one, Zabbix full server status. It works almost, but I will show you how you can fix it and make it functioning 100%. So click on it. We can see that uh, last update was uh, already last year. Uh, and the only thing that we need is copy ID to the clipboard. So click here, go back to your Grafana cloud, paste the ID here, 5363, and click load. Then we can change the name if you want. You can change the name of the dashboard that we're gonna be imported. We need to select the data source, the one that we just created, Zabbix data source, and then just click import. After clicking the import, you can see the dashboard, but uh, you probably noticed that most of this stuff doesn't really work. Like we get something probably in the performance, we get the file system space utilization, CPU IO weight, but uh, no data, no data, not available, not available, offline, total memory not available. How to fix that? Very easy. Uh, the only thing that we need to do is make this dashboard editable. So save dashboard, save, and uh, go back to the dashboard that we just have, uh, Zabbix full server status. and why these widgets don't work just because they point to a little bit different items that we have right now in the version 6.4 so just go to the widget that you want to fix find three dots click edit and let's see it is pointing to the item sabix agent ping let's type ping and grafana cloud will suggest us that the available item actually is linux sabix agent ping click on it online there we go we fixed one widget Let's fix the memory utilization. Click edit, memory utilization. I will delete something for the suggestion. There we go, Linux memory utilization. And the last one, let's take the memory and the CPU. Again, click edit. CPU utilization, we change this to uh, this, Linux CPU utilization and memory utilization, Linux memory utilization. There we go. This is how you need to go through all of these widgets to make this dashboard function 100%, where you just create your own dashboard for all the stuff that you already have in a Zabbix, where you also can use all of the visualization options in the dashboards that is not uh, worse by, by any time. And you can configure all of the alerts, escalations, notifications, uh, everything, SLA monitoring and so on and so on in a Zabbix frontend itself, and still have a Zabbix Grafana for some second pane of the glass where you can visualize all the data. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, don't forget to post them in the comments. Click like, click subscribe, and we'll see you in the next videos.